Hey everybody, this is Aaron with Synth of Samadhi. And what we have today are going to be first impressions of EO Green. So right now, I actually have not been able to smell this before. Uh, I have a sample. Um, and, you know, I, I've i smelled from the vials a little bit, you know. I, uh, I wanted to actually take a video of what this smells like on the skin, spraying it, all of that, right? Because I've never actually done like a true first impression that was like legitimately captured, uh, you know, without like at the, at the very least, like, you know, doing a couple different takes, like whatever, you know? So um, hopefully I don't mess this up and let's see what this smells like. So this is EO Green from Ensar Oud. And uh, from my understanding, uh, and don't, you know, don't flame me on how I'm about to pronounce this, but it's kind of like his take on a, a sheeper. Uh, I always have a hard time pronouncing those words. So if I did that correctly, let me know. If I didn't, whatever, you know, that's just, I'm gonna call it a sheeper. Uh, so smelling from the vial, it almost smells like a fougere, you know? Like, I guess I don't, ultimately understand if it is exactly a fougere or if it is a sheeper. It's very green though, right? And you get greeted with an immediate herbal facet, right? That in a way almost smells like, like you know when you're playing in grass when you're a kid and sometimes the grass gets on your hands and it has just like that really fresh, just earthy, grassy kind of aroma, right? And so that is exactly what you get with this. Uh, maybe with some marigold um, and uh, dandelion, right? Like and I know dandelion obviously is not a uh, note here at all, but to me, just smelling fresh from here, it reminds me of fresh cut grass, dandelions, fields of green, right? It's just that really amazing, deep, earthy, herbal greenness. Uh, now, I could be mistaken, but for my understanding, Ensar used yuzu in uh, uh, the top notes of this. And um, I'm not too familiar with what yuzu smells like. I, I've, I have other compositions that have yuzu. Uh, uh, I think Bryn Dobbin, for example, used a yuzu note. Uh, and from my understanding, it's kind of like marigoldish, right? And so I think that's kind of what that is. I wish I knew more about it. So there, there is some kind of similarities and crossovers that I've smelled with yuzu and other fragrances. And this definitely maintains that kind of like herbally, bitter, green with an almost kind of citrusy facet to it. Now that's just smelling from the sample, right? So let's give it a spray and let's see what happens. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Give me a little bit of chills. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I would definitely classify this as a sheeper. Uh, it's like you get this soft tonka powderiness with some beautiful, ultra bitter citrus rind. To me, smelling it on the skin is completely different than smelling from the vial, obviously, right? And so now, my scent association leans a little bit more to the lemon tree that I have out in my front yard. Uh, here in Arizona, we have um, citrus groves, lemon trees, uh, citrus trees, just everywhere, grapefruits, like you name it. You walk down the street, and you quite literally smell orange blossoms, uh, you know, lemon blossoms, just uh, all of these beautiful, um, kind of like just bitter green notes, right? Because when you crush the leaves of a lemon tree, a citrus tree, uh, they're all kind of the same thing, like if you really think about it. Um, and, and, you know, on a little aside here, um, you know, lemons and oranges can grow on the exact same tree because a lot of times here in the Southwest, they have to kind of graft uh, the different um, trees onto like a certain kind of like root system. You know, I'm probably saying that wrong, but uh, you know, it's just citrus groves are everywhere. 
And so one of the things I really like to do, uh, anytime I'm outside, I walk past my tree, I grab a little leaf, I crush it between my fingers, and it is the most fragrant, beautiful aroma. And just the other day, I was thinking to myself, what would this smell like if this was to be distilled, right? Because it's just a, a beautiful smell. I mean, sometimes I'll rub it on my skin and just go for a walk in the summertime, and you just get this very deep green uh, uh kind of citrusy, not very sweet, but super bitter green uh, citric vibes. And that's, that's exactly what this smells like. I'm really, really impressed with this. If you were to tell me that this came from any sort of vintage perfumer, if this was like, I don't know, I, I know Ansar's made some uh, you know, references to like Rudnitsky, I think Rudnitska, um, you know, oh, Gerlain. I don't know if that's how I pronounce that. I'm, I'm terrible at pronunciations. Uh, but if you were to tell me that this was uh, some sort of classic 1950s, 1960s cheaper, uh, I would believe you. This does not smell like an, uh, an Ensar Oud perfume at all. What's interesting is that I don't quite get the Oud cutting through yet. Obviously, this is a first impression. I've only had this on for, I think, what looks like, I don't know, three minutes, you know? But it's extremely pleasing. I don't know why I thought that this was gonna go in a way more deeper herbal route, but this is actually like really uplifting. And there's a little bit of crossover with Manzor Oud. Uh, if you tried that, you would know that there's this kind of like really beautiful, like like zesty kind of like jasmine, citrusy, orange blossomy kind of note that Ensar used there. And while this isn't that exact same note, this is that kind of similar vibe. And I know some people ask, you know, like, like, is there any similarities with Manzor Oud? Uh, in my opinion, that's one of my all-time favorite Ensar fragrances. And yes, there's a lot of similarities here uh, in structure, not in scent. Where Manzor Oud had more of a, a of a sandalwood backbone to it with some kind of like, you know, animalics, like civity, kind of a, a furry texture almost in the dry down. This this is devoid of, of the sandalwood. I don't get a whole lot of sandalwood in this. I get a really amazing citrus now. Like a lot of those bitter herbal qualities are gone. And now we're just getting some straight up citrus here. And This is beautiful. Yeah, like, it's almost hard to believe that this is an Ensar fragrance because this is completely different than anything he's done. I think if you're one of those people that criticizes, right, Ensar's perfumery in the way and says that everything smells like leather, everything smells like ambergris, or uh, this just smells like musk, right? You see that a lot, like on the forums. Um, if you're one of those people, give this a try. Mostly because this is different than anything I've smelled from him. I've been slowly working my way through his entire catalog of guitars and parfums. Uh, there's still quite a few that I haven't tried. Um, but out of all the ones that I have tried now, I, I mean, there's at least 10 under my belt. Uh, this is probably the most different. Now, if I was to classify it as being close to anything, it would be Manzor Oud. Uh, mostly because that did have this very green, incense-y, uh, you know, wallapata vibe to it. And this carries that tradition. I mean, it's a sheeper. Um, and not only is it a sheeper, you know, it, it's, it's fresh. It's refreshing. It doesn't feel like a barbershop scent. It doesn't smell like an old man. It's not going to necessarily feel like it's straight from the 60s or 70s, but it does have the vibe that a perfumer like that uh, would approach this kind of composition. And so ultimately, I'm impressed. And not only am I impressed, but I'm surprised, you know? Like I, I honestly was going into this thinking, oh, I know what this is gonna smell like, you know? I think reading Ensar's descriptions I knew for sure I could smell it already and I was completely wrong. You know, uh, this was completely different than what I thought my experience was gonna be. Uh, especially from, you know, this little sample. Um, you know, smelling it even from the cap, you know, it, it, it almost has like an animalic facet to it 
that on the skin just completely sings a really harmonious note. And uh, a really fun way to tell how a fragrance is opening smells, right? Is to just simply do another little small spray and then compare, right? So by now we're kind of getting into the heart notes. Now I wanna kind of go back and reassess what uh, the top note in the opening is gonna be. So I'm gonna do another little spray here. I try not to immediately smell my wrist. Um, I find that when you do that, you go nose blind or at least lose some of the ability to smell the deeper nuances of a fragrance. So if you're like me, let it waft to your nose because these kind of auxiliary silage and projection is gonna give you a weight, probably a better idea of what somebody else might smell versus what you yourself is going to smell, right? If you've ever been by somebody that sprayed the exact same fragrance as you, you'll be like, oh my God, that smells beautiful. How come I don't smell that? And I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, if you're just smelling nose to your skin all the time, you're, you're not getting the full effect. So with one more spray, I'm getting much more of a bitter opening this time. That fresh cut grass, fresh cut dandelion, marigold, crushed leaf, citrus leaf smell is, is coming back. I, hint, I get hints of, a, I wanna say jasmine, I could be wrong on that, but there's a, a slightly indolic aspect to this. And it just really lends to an overall fresh quality to this. Initially, I think I said that there was like a touch of powderiness to it. I, I'm not getting that now in the opening. I'm not getting this powdery quality so much as I am a very bitter green, very, very green effect. And there's an earthiness to this. It's very grounding. And when I go over to my other wrist here, it's interesting because now I'm starting to get this kind of incense -y warmth that's bubbling up. It's starting to get that kind of classic NSAR resin feel. And there's a warmth that's starting to pull through. And now I can actually smell the oud. And what's interesting is I think Irian Jaya was what was used in this. Now, I've never smelled Irian Jaya. However, I've smelled Irian Orang. And uh, this reminds me heavily of some kind of Irian Orang-like notes. Very jungly, kind of a petrichor earthiness. But there's this like really beautiful resinous green incense that's involved there. And it somehow it's a cross between like almost like a like a plantation tie with this like fruity syrupiness. And then there's like this jungle petrichor aroma that you get with Papuan and even like Sri Lankan oud sometimes and Indonesian oud. And so now with this dry down, I'm getting heavy citrus, not so much herbal, and with incense coming through. And it's this warm glowing incense and I've noticed this kind of warmth that Ansar puts in his fragrances. It, it's something that I don't think I experienced as much in the beginning of my journey with him, but now I notice it so much more, especially with EO Red. EO Red really showcased this kind of like, like sultry, velvety smoothness with this kind of glowing resinous warmth. And even though this is nothing like EO Red at all, the similarity there is the feeling of this warmth. It's comforting. And someone told me recently, a fragrance should only ever make you feel comfortable. If you feel anything other than pure comfort with the fragrance, then you probably shouldn't be wearing it. You shouldn't feel uh, uh, like like tense. You shouldn't feel any sort of emotion that's like, oh wait, that's, that's kind of strange, right? Like you should feel comfort. And even if the smell itself is something that's challenging, that challenge shouldn't be an uncomfortable experience. It should be a, a very um, uh, inquisitive experience, right? It's like, oh wow, this is challenging. Like, not only is this challenging, uh, but this is fun because it's allowing me to explore uh, what I personally find to be 
challenging, right? And and why do I find it challenging? Versus saying, oh, whew, this, oof, this is crazy. I, I don't know if I like this. Let's spray some more. And then you're just lying to yourself. Do I like this or, or do I not? And, and I think anybody in a fragrance journey will, will kind of understand what I'm talking about where, you know, there's like good challenge and then there's bad challenge, right? And I feel that no fragrance should ever make you question or feel uncomfortable in your own skin. This is something I feel 100% comfortable wearing. Wow. Whatever is in the base, I don't know if it's Tonka, I don't know if it's Labdanum. I saw somewhere, I think someone said it was Labdanum, but I could be confusing that with cheaper Narcotique. Uh, uh, please don't. Don't flame me on that uh, pronunciation there. Um, but there's a sweetness happening. And I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know what's doing it. But it's starting to really just add the perfect touch to smooth everything out, to round it out. Now, when I go back over to this other wrist, I'm still getting these like almost spicy green aspects, right? And so before I didn't pick that up, I, I didn't pick up like a spiciness. And it's not a pepper spiciness, but it's a green spiciness. And I think that's something that's worth noting. It's like, how do we perceive these scents? And I know, I know our noses do this thing, right? To where you only ever use one nostril at a time. And there's like some science and biology behind this. And, and basically each nostril has different receptors inside of it. And depending on which nostril is going to be doing the smelling, which, you know, scent uh, receptacles or whatever they're called, whatever that is, that is doing the smelling on which side of your, your face uh, will depend on which nuances is going to pick up. And so even the blood flow in our body will affect the way how we perceive scent on that particular extremity, right? And so over here, all citrus, smooth, warm, uh, powdery um, sweetness, right? The powder is kind of coming back over here. Over here, I get spicy, herbal, green, uh, refreshing, uh, uh, crushed leaf, petrichor. And so it's, it's really interesting to notice that, right? And so a lot of times when you go to spray a fragrance once, you get this initial impression. But then when you go back, like let's say two, three weeks later, you spray it again. Oh, wow. Now it smells completely different. And from what I read, that has to do with how our brain uh, perceives notes. And so it'll, it'll, it'll latch on to something without fully understanding it and go, oh, wow, like that's, that's all there is there, you know? And then not just that, but the body chemistry is different all over our body. So depending on where you spray it, we'll have a completely different experience than if it's behind your ears, behind your neck, uh, you know, your wrist, your chest, your legs, whatever. It's, it's always going to be different. And I think if you are going to sample something properly, I think this is the best way to do it. Do a tiny little spray here, tiny little spray here, wait a little bit, come back, try it again, and just see what differences you notice. See how your body reacts uh, to different fragrances and how the fragrance uh, evolves and what notes come out um, on which parts of your body, you know? Like just learn what your chemistry is. And um, wow. Yeah, man, it, it's a journey, you know, and, and have fun with that journey. I'm not trying to tell you guys like how to do this stuff. This is just my methodology for it. And I, I feel this kind of helps explain my process. Like if I say something that I experience, and maybe you don't experience that. It's not necessarily that I'm wrong or that you're wrong. It's just that all of our chemistry is different. All of our nose receptors are different. Uh, you know, I, I used to be somebody that partied quite a lot. And if you understand what that means, I've pretty much wrecked my nose in a lot of different ways. So I'm sure the way how I experience scent is gonna be completely different than someone else. So if you've experienced EO Green, uh, I'd love to hear you know what your thoughts are and if you like it, if you don't like it, um, you know, if you've noticed that there's these different aspects depending on you know how you spray it or even how much you spray it. This is really fun. And uh, 
I think this might be a standout from NSAR's collection. Oud Yusuf obviously blew me away, right? EO Red blew me away too. Same with EO Black, but EO Green altogether is a different experience. And if you're somebody that likes to chase after vintage fragrances, if you think uh, like that kind of classic vintage uh, Oriental Sheeper doesn't exist anymore because perfumers just don't know how to make Sheepers, which is a sentiment I see a lot on base notes and like other forums, uh, try this out because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you think Ansar is a one-trick pony, think again. This is worth sampling. This is worth checking out uh, simply to just understand what this person's perfumery style is all about. Like I said, I thought I had it figured out. I didn't. So I really look forward to see what the future holds for Ansar. And I really look forward to see uh, how my perception of this scent changes. So once again, if you've listened this far, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, I try to keep these somewhat short and not so long-winded, but, uh, you know, 20 minutes seems to be where it's at. So, all right, guys. Uh, Jay Ma, have a good day. Baraka Allah Fika. And, uh, yeah, have fun.